In the ancient kingdom of Chu, there was a time when a lake dried up due to a prolonged drought, causing great hardship for the fish that struggled to survive in the remaining mud puddles. Zhuangzi, an observer of nature, noticed how these fish supported each other by smearing each other with slime and exchanging saliva to stay alive. While he admired their solidarity, he pondered whether it would be better if the lake were full, allowing the fish to swim freely without resorting to such drastic measures for survival. From a modern-day perspective, characterized by individualism, we may nostalgically reflect on the past's strong sense of human solidarity and community. Similar to the fish in Zhuangzi's story, people back then relied on each other, actively participated in each other's lives, and formed close-knit communities. These communities not only provided safety, but also fostered social interactions, making life easier. Moreover, during times of crisis, group solidarity was even more evident, as people came together to support each other, exemplifying the adage that shared sorrow is half sorrow. In recent decades, during a period marked by relative stability, economic growth, and technological progress, the world has become more individualistic. While collectivism and close-knit communities still exist in many parts of the world, people, especially in affluent Western countries, have become less reliant on and less engaged with each other. This shift is not solely due to wealth but also driven by technology, which has made many aspects of human interaction increasingly obsolete. Consequently, the lake is now full, akin to the fish swimming freely without needing each other. However, as people need each other less on a communal level, a new challenge has emerged, the pervasive experience of loneliness in individualistic societies. Loneliness is undoubtedly a pressing issue, but we might have underestimated the benefits of not needing people. This video elaborates on Zhuangzi's fish story, highlighting the joy of a lake full of water. A lone fish swimming in a lake full of water has the freedom to choose its own path, seeking food and shelter as needed and interacting with other fish at its discretion. Similarly, Individuals in an individualistic society have the autonomy to determine their own paths and socializing with others is often an option rather than a necessity, allowing people to move on from social interactions when they wish to. It's evident that not relying on close relationships for survival leads people to mind their own business. Although humans still depend on each other for various survival aspects, they no longer require constant physical presence and personal relationships for basic needs. In our well-connected society, technology efficiently caters to our needs. With a simple click, we can order anything we require. We can hire individuals to provide various services such as moving, cleaning, or caregiving when we're unwell. Self-scanning checkouts are becoming commonplace in Europe. And with the emergence of AI, even companionship that was once reserved for a spouse can be replaced by advanced robots. While the latter may seem extreme, it exemplifies how our reliance on each other's physical company may decrease in the future if such technological advancements become widespread. A world where human-to-human -human contact and communication are rare may sound like a dystopian nightmare for some. Indeed, such a scenario would likely lead to increased levels of loneliness within societies, causing severe consequences. However, apart from these negative effects, could there be some advantages to the idea of not needing others? Imagine a world where we are all like fish in a vast, rich ocean, free to explore its depths, mysteries, and knowledge independently. The adventure path is wide open, inviting us to explore and experience new things. While we have the option to undertake this journey with companions, we can just as easily embark on it alone. Having a companion is a choice. The absence of constant reliance on others grants us the freedom to spend our every waking moment wherever we wish, doing whatever we please, 
whenever we desire. This freedom and independence in the physical world can be immensely enjoyable for those who appreciate solitude. Consider Albert Einstein, who exemplified the idea of a lone fish. He found joy in the distance he maintained from others while excelling in solitude, all the while deeply caring about the well-being of his fellow human beings. In his own words, my passionate sense of social justice and social responsibility has always contrasted oddly with my pronounced lack of need for direct contact with other human beings and human communities. I am truly a lone traveler and have never belonged to my country, my home, my friends, or even my immediate family, with my whole heart. In the face of all these ties, I have never lost a sense of distance and a need for solitude. On the other hand, consider the experience of Carl Jung, who, after becoming engaged and married, remarked in his diary, I am no longer alone with myself, and I can only artificially recall the scary and beautiful feeling of solitude. This is the shadow side of the fortune of love. Jung realized that by committing to marriage, he had given up the precious experience of solitude. When interacting with others is optional, we are free to withdraw and embrace solitude. While some individuals cannot bear to be alone and prefer constant social interaction, solitude is a valuable experience for those who cherish it, whether it is imposed or chosen. In the realm of interpersonal relationships, the idea of not needing others can be a blessing. While there was more solidarity, group activity, and involvement in each other's lives in earlier times, close-knit communities often carried the baggage of interpersonal drama. Whenever people come together, there tends to be some form of turmoil, whether it's gossip, bullying, conflicts, or disagreements. Such challenges often accompany dependence on others. However, when we do not require these individuals, we are not compelled to tolerate their behavior or endure relationships with those we dislike simply to meet our needs. Especially in Western countries, we observe that marriage, in terms of survival, has become optional rather than obligatory. Religious authorities that once enforced marriage have seen their influence diminish significantly. In practical terms, both men and women can survive independently and many do so successfully. This shift has brought both positive and negative consequences. For instance, divorce rates have been steadily rising, increasing in broken families. The growing number of individuals choosing not to marry or have children has led to a population crisis in places like Japan. When there is no necessity to be in a relationship or marriage, people tend to become more selective. They value their singlehood and may be hesitant to exchange it for commitment. While a committed relationship can be deeply fulfilling, it also carries potential risks and downsides, such as abusive or incompatible partners, emotional drain, or simply not being the right fit. Relationships require time and effort, resources that some people prefer to allocate elsewhere. On the downside, Increased selectivity may make it challenging to find a suitable partner when one eventually desires a significant other. Not needing someone means ending a relationship can be done more swiftly and easily, which also applies to friendships. Not being dependent on friends allows us to terminate toxic relationships and set boundaries with others. When we don't have to make friends out of necessity, we are more likely to befriend individuals we genuinely like, connect with, and share common interests. Some individuals willingly embrace conformity, adopting the opinions and behaviors of others in their quest for belonging. In the broader context of human behavior, many of us are concerned about how others perceive us. We tend to enjoy approval, high regard, and respect from those around us. Often. To gain this validation, we jump through the hoops that society has set up for us, almost like trained monkeys. Does our pursuit of approval compromise our authenticity? 
What if we didn't rely on external validation for our happiness, or at the very least, only relied on it to a minimal extent necessary for functioning in society? This shift would grant us the freedom to shape our lives and ourselves according to our preferences. Embracing this freedom doesn't imply a lack of sociability, compassion, or goodwill toward others. Rather, it means that we don't allow external judgments to dictate our authentic choices. Philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche took this idea further, encouraging us to break free from societal norms, shed slave morality, and transcend human limitations by becoming the overman or Obermensch. According to Nietzsche, societal constraints and moral codes hinder individuals from realizing their full potential. The overmen surpass these limitations, creating their own authentic values and meanings. Whether we choose self-actualization or simply seek the tranquility of solitude, the concept of not needing people provides us with the autonomy to determine our own paths. Not needing people doesn't negate the importance of human connections, a natural inclination that varies from person to person. For most individuals, Human connections are integral to their overall well-being, and the adverse effects of loneliness and social isolation are real. Not needing people doesn't mean avoiding others entirely. It grants us the flexibility to embrace solitude when we desire it. When we can fend for ourselves, we have the freedom to associate with people, form friendships, and even engage in intimate relationships all while retaining the ability to walk away at our discretion and relish the peacefulness of solitude, far removed from the tumult of human interactions.